Welcome everyone. This is Andres Restart. I am joined by my friend Bo from Botox Games. I added him literally last second. I was just going to do this myself, but we were DMing each other, just talking about stuff. I was like, yo, do you want to join? He's like, sure. So yeah. it was Bo. after 5 p.m. <laughs> you, you're like, you want to join? I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? We're already talking anyway. Might as well. Yeah, exactly. So like, all right, here we are. Um, and the title may be somewhat ambiguous, but you might be able to somewhat piece it together based off the thumbnail and just what's going on lately. Um, we're just going to chat, you know, talk about for a little bit of while, a little while for about, you know, I guess the lack of a Nintendo Direct or the maybe not like we don't know. We don't know. Indie World was announced. It's happening tomorrow. Um, I think I'm going to live stream it. So that that's happening at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific time, if I remember correctly. Is that that's right, Bo? Yep. Yeah, so, you know, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about maybe Silk Song, maybe not Silk Song, you know, um, and just kind of the, the general going on with Nintendo and the whole, um, I mean, I think that the, I think it's a really interesting conversation. Um, you know, it's one of the things where Bo, Bo and I were talking about, like, what is going on right now? Like, a lot of people, you know, are, are, are worried that there won't be a direct because we have this person that was supposedly credible and this other person that was also supposedly credible is saying that there would be a direct in April and one has disappeared and the other has gone back on it. But then now things that they are saying are coming true. So what is happening? Uh, it, it's, it's interesting. So we're going to be going into this, trying not to jump to conclusions because... We do not know what is going to happen, but I think it'll be interesting to talk about. Um, but uh, guys in the chat, if you let me know how everything is looking and sounding, I will be going back and forth with the chat. Um, I did intend on this being a little bit of a Q&A, so that will still happen. But Abo, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good. It's just been weird the past couple of weeks as a, as a Nintendo YouTuber, as a Nintendo fan, because I made a video, I think, last week talking about how quiet Nintendo is. And it's, it's what you said. It's just like, what is going on? I don't, I don't know anymore. Anything could happen. Switch 2 might come, be coming out in 2026 for all we know at this point. 2027. 2027. Team 2027. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they did say <laughs> that they had a 10-year plan. You know? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe it was right. Yeah. yeah. It's it's weird. It's it's weird what's going on. And, you know, there are people saying, oh, it was always going to be a June Direct. But I don't... First off, that that's not a guarantee either. Um, you know? But I think... The moment Nintendo had a partner direct in February, this whole idea that they're going to follow the exact same pattern should have been thrown out the window because they've never had a partner direct before, period. Like, it's always been a partner direct mini. This partner direct is a new thing. And that's, I mean, it's basically like a mini, but, you know, that's what they had for February, not a general direct as they usually do. So we're definitely in uncharted territories. Nintendo is not attending Gamescom, and that's leading people to think that they're not going to have much of a good year. Um, but then there's other people who think that the reason why they're not at Gamescom has to do with a completely different reason. Not so much that there isn't like content to come out this year that they want, that, but more so because of the Switch Two leaks from last year at Gamescom, and Nintendo being very upset about it. So, you know, why is it that they're not at Gamescom? It, it may be a combination of things that's probably that usually when something doesn't happen it's a comp there's it's more than one reason um i'm not saying that that's why but you know the gamescom thing is interesting to me because last year while we did get those interesting rumors and reports that they showed switch 2 to devs did nintendo have anything playable there i think it was just here's the kingdom because mario wonder wasn't playable until a week later at nintendo live in seattle so i don't even think they had like new games playable there last year when they had an exciting slate of games announced so the people saying they're not at gamescom because they don't have anything for the second half of the year that doesn't really track to me yeah i mean also they're gonna have games right it's, dude like, people seem to think there's only gonna be like one or two more games and i'm just like that that doesn't make sense even if the switch 2 was supposed to come out this year and it got delayed they would have they had plenty of time to move thousand year door and luigi's mansion 2 and then the ocean around like they would have spread that stuff out if right. there was truly nothing else. Maybe like one more game. I, I would expect at least four more new games this year. Not enough. Yeah, like maybe there's not a December game. Sure, they don't need one. Maybe they skip July for the first time in the entire Switch era. Um, you know, I think that's unlikely, but we'll see. 
I know, but we should try not to jump to conclusions. <laughs> right, right, yeah, here, we'll right? see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Just because there's seven straight years of July games from Nintendo doesn't mean the eighth year will be. I mean, one would think, right? Like at that point, let's publish a paper. Like it's almost like scientific proof, but that's a joke. But point is, we don't know. But like, hypothetically speaking, let's say we do skip July. Let's say there's not a game in December. There could still be a game. In August, September, October, There's November. usually not one in August. That's the thing. Well, then maybe there's only three games or it's maybe there's two games game. in November. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, something small. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely there's definitely some oddities here. But let's let's talk. I'm going to get to chat in a moment. We're, we'll get there. But there, there's something I kind of want to get to specifically with, with this idea of, like, not jumping to conclusions here. So the basic story is this. When... I'm going to try and do this quickly, but there's kind of a lot. So both feel free to speed me up if I'm taking too long with, with summing fine. up this entire story. So back in February, if I remember correctly, there was a lot of talk that Switch 2 would be revealed in March. And then immediately after, stories started breaking out that the Switch 2 has been internally delayed. Thus throwing this, this idea of Switch 2 being revealed in March out the window like immediately after. Because that was a plan, but it was supposedly delayed based off all these reports. And these reports are coming from the K, Bloomberg, Video Games Chronicle, Eurogamer, all considered to be reputable sites. Not even all those sites are gaming sites, like in the case of Bloomberg and the K. So, like, they're, they're bigger than that. Um, but the initial story was not from these sites. They followed up this initial story. This initial story came from Brazil, his PH Brazil podcast. Video Games Chronicle cited him in their initial story of this delay. So all of these other sites followed Brazil in this story of Switch 2 being internally delayed. And so when people go out and say that Brazil is unreliable, let's remind ourselves that he is the originating story for every other reputable site out there reporting on this delay. But then shortly afterwards, Brazil took the FAMI boards once, you know, all the dust was starting to settle with these with these reports, saying that from what he's heard, there would be an indie world. He assumed March, but he said, but if you actually read his words, he didn't say for sure March, he just assumed March, but before a direct, a, a direct of some kind in April, and then he switched to reveal in June. Of course, even then he said, hey, things are subject to change. Now... That was said, but then also the owner of Universal Nintendo, Necro Felipe or Necro Lipe on Family Boards, like re like replied to this 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 message on Family Boards and said that he heard it was a general. So from there, you have two you have two of these different sources that we thought, oh okay, that there there seems to be some credibility there, right? And that's how that's what the originating rumor for the April Direct. With that also comes this idea of a Switch 2 reveal in June. But there, there's a few more considerations here because around February, this, this is the part where, you know, I'm looking back, there might be some things I'm kind of missing. Like there was a partner direct that was, that was supposed to happen. Universe and Nintendo reported on a direct happening on a on a date. It did not happen. And instead, we got an Xbox podcast because there was a controversy centering around Microsoft games going to other platforms. And we heard afterwards from both Jeff Grubb and even Puro himself, though, the number one leaker suggesting that the presentation was indeed delayed by about a week, the partner showcase. And so that actually suggested that Universal Nintendo's initial report of the Direct was not false. But people said he was false, even though later on other people supported his story. So that happened. But anyways, a few weeks ago, you know, we, we hadn't gotten any major updates on this direct rumor brazil comes out again and says hey guys you know i know it's been a little bit and he reached out to his sources and last he heard he's not sure about what's going on with the indie world but the the, the, the direct is still a go and so you know i talked about it uh ball i'm pretty sure you talked about it too and a few weeks ago we we're like oh okay well i mean you know they've been a little bit quiet but that's fine you know that there was no need to really say anything but then was it yeah last week Brazil comes out again and says, hey, guys, I no longer think a direct is happening. And so that was kind of like this roller coaster, right? Like he he's the initial source from one of the biggest reports has ever happened. Right. 
and then he thinks there's this direct that's going to happen. It's really quiet. Then oh, last, like a few weeks ago, hey, it's still happening. And now, oh, I don't think it's happening anymore. Now, you know, he still has a source that suggested it, but it's a little shaky. And that's kind of what it's become. Like it, became, it went from confident to extremely not confident. But then today, the indie world that we've been waiting for was just announced. So then, does that mean that the direct that Brazil was talking about is going to happen? No, not necessarily. Let's try not to, to jump to conclusions here. Because I took a look at something here. Um, I just basically, I'm, I'm try, I had a list up here. I think it was Nintendo Life created a good list. Um, but basically, I just looked at the history of Indie World presentations. And there's actually quite a few that happen in April. And then we don't see a direct until June. Now, that's not always the case, but off but the last few years there's been indie worlds in April and then a direct happens in June. So just because we're getting indie world this week does not mean the Brazil rumor is true. That's kind of it, but there are some other little things like just the idea that an April direct makes sense. Like outside of rumor, right? We don't have a July game yet. April is still vacant, and normally normally we have something in April, so we're thinking there could be a shadow drop game. There are the ratings for Silk Song. Could come could happen in, in this um if we, we could finally get some sort of release date in this indie world, but also not necessarily could be a little bit while longer before we see Silk Song come out. Um and I mean that's that's pretty much the summation of what's going on. But Bo, if there's anything I missed or you want to add, feel free to to throw it out there. No, I think you covered it pretty well. The the stuff with Brazil is what I find most interesting because the Was roller coaster. He... Right, yeah, that roller coaster. But also, I'm just curious. Was I'm not as familiar with him. I'm not sure if many people are because I think that first 2025 delay was like the biggest thing that Brazil had ever reported. Was he saying 2024 beforehand for a Switch Two? Do you know? I'm just curious, like his track record prior to that. Um, that is a good question. Uh, because the I... thing is, while yes, all these other outlets are corroborating what Brazil said, we still don't know. It is possible that. Brazil has not gotten anything right yet. You know what I mean? I was actually thinking about that too, because yeah, like it, it kind of it goes back to that. Remember the the video I made, the Hopia Maximum video for Switch Two in 2024. I said like seven times in that video. I no longer think Switch Two is coming out in 2024, but technically, it's all rumor. We do not know what Nintendo was doing. It could right. Well, and on the flip side of that coin, as the Team 2025 debate leader. Right. I still don't fully believe it was ever intended to come out this year, maybe aside from some, you know, meetings they had. Like, sure, I don't know if that was ever rumors. something that they had. I know, yeah, exactly. All the rumors beforehand said that. But right. it, it's to the point, though, don't take everything as fact. But also, I think some people are a little too quick to brush off rumors. You do have to look at them a little bit and kind of, you know, investigate that, that source and their track record, which is why I'm curious about Brazil before he reported the delay. Because yeah, it, it's interesting, right? Um, Brazil, I'm pretty sure I, I want to say they're, they're it's a Portuguese cast, correct? I believe so, I, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Brazil is from Brazil, <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong there. Um, but so you know, I, I don't, I, given that I don't speak Portuguese, I haven't followed this person, right? You know, over the years, but the way they're treated on family boards, they're, they're treated as someone worthy of respect. Um, Meanwhile, you talk about someone like Nash Weedle and they scoff, they scoff at Nash Weedle, who has gotten things right, but also has gotten things wrong. They have a very spotty record, um, which did not come to light until recently. Just for the record, for six months, I was making videos like saying, hey, guys, there's this person who's gotten these things right lately, but I haven't seen anything they've gone wrong. Can you please share with me? And only like recently did those wrong things come out of the woodworks. They always existed, but because they, you know, they speak Spanish and most of us, you know, speak predominantly English. We're not kind of as privy to the to the track history, right? So, the same way how we're like, hey, we like with Nash Weedle, there it looked like they had a pretty good track record, but that was mostly maybe because a lot of English speakers don't have haven't been paying attention to them for a very long time. So, you know, us, you know, journalists and, and content creators haven't had seen the full track record. So with Brazil, 
because we haven't seen the full track record, I mean, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. Granted, we could go back and probably watch all of his podcasts, even though we don't really understand the language. I'll learn Portuguese just to yeah. <laughs> verify. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the tricky part, right? But uh, I guess the point is, is that there was no one really questioning Brazil's credibility, you know? So that 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 is that is kind of the other interesting part. And then when Universal Nintendo corroborated his story about the direct thing, that's where it gets more interesting, right? So like I think some people might say, "Oh, well, you're just bleeding a random post." It's not a random post. This is someone who's respected in in, in the fan wars community. This is someone who is the initial source for one of the biggest stories ever, right? And with this other story. It's being corroborated by someone else who has report on things and has been supported by others. So it isn't like, you know, this isn't like a, a Zippo related thing or even a, a Nash. We don't like this is a I would say in terms of like reason to take it seriously. This is higher on the pecking order. Mm -hmm. Of course, still a rumor. So and I, I would I, I I don't you know, I, I don't I don't know. It's it's. I guess what, what I, what I want to say is that I don't know what to believe at this point. Um, cause there's, there's so much fluctuation. And I, I think that that's, there's also, that's also in part why a lot of people are frustrated because for a lot of people, you know, when we say, Hey, yeah, take it with a grain of salt and Hey, this plans can change. Some people just think that's a cop out answer, but the sad truth is also reality. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a tricky beast. But if there's a direct next week, I would say Brazil's right. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that there is a direct. I hope he's right. I, really, I hope really he's, hope he's I, right. I, I hope he is right. Like that's... I'm not gonna say if I think there will be one or you know any other way. I, I, just, I, I hope maybe 50 50. I'm like I'm just hoping at this point. Yeah. Hopium. Hopium yeah. maximus. Hopium maximus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's let's let me check in with the chat here. Let's see what you guys have to say on this. See what's going on. Hello to everyone. Hello there, Anthony Smith. Hello there, Connor. Uh, Connor Adsy. Hi, Andres. Uh, how's it going? So tomorrow I know that we're getting an Indie World Direct, but I hope that we do get Pizza Tower for Switch or if it's going to go to Switch 2. Um, That'd be cool. I think, isn't, yeah. yeah, I mean, that that would, yeah, Tower's would be. really popular, but makes makes sense for Switch. For sure. I don't think they need to wait for Switch 2 on that. I, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Hello there, Sky Swords Alyssa. How are you? AJ Thomas in the chat. If there's one thing that I want in the indie world, uh, is some announcement for a companion Tears of the Kingdom story. In the indie world? Yeah, um, um, unless we're talking about like a cadence of Hyrule kind of thing, I, I would say that's just not going to happen. Even that, even a cadence of Hyrule based off Tears of the Kingdom feels like pretty unlikely. Can you imagine if there's a first party like Nintendo indie game announced tomorrow? Like from like a uh what's that, Brace Yourself Games, and then that comes out in July and it just answers everything. There you go. That answers everything. Yeah, we'll what was July that studio game. Shinin. Uh, they used to make a lot of cool games. Fast what racing, yeah. Cool. When was the last time they put out a game? They released that game The Tourist on Tourist. PS5 and Switch, I think. I think that might have been the last game. That was 2019. That's a long time. Is that really their last game? I'm looking. Oh, no. Okay, they released a game called The Punch You In in 2022. Where you're a That's penguin weird. and you punch. Yeah. Punch You In. Punch You In. <laughs> I'm trying to look up what this even is. I never heard of that one. Yeah. Like, what's funny is that on, on Wiki, like, it's, you can't even, like, click it. There's, like, not it doesn't really look like it. their other games. To be honest, let me let me, let me show you guys real quick. Keep you guys in the loop. Let me know if this lags. By the way, I think since I changed to fiber, it won't lag anymore. But you got some new internet. I've, I got new internet. This looks nothing like other games. <laughs> no, I mean it's a two D game. Yeah. They usually make like you know 3D games, at least 3D environments. Yeah, like yeah, they're they're known for like making like pretty high fidelity looking games on weak hardware. And I mean, this is cool. But it's definitely completely different, like you said. 
I don't know. Maybe we'll get another Shinnin game. That'd be interesting. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell too much on this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Hello, they're having hope in the chat. Uh, Nishrig Pops. Uh, I don't think Silk Song will be at the Indie World because I have a feeling Xbox has marketing rights for it similar to Persona and Metaphor. You could be right. Let, let's not jump to conclusions here. It might not be at the Indie World. That is totally a valid point. Uh, yeah, that, I, I know. I know. Like ratings aren't necessarily indicative of like an imminent thing. And as someone, I have not played Hollow Knight, so I'm not. I don't really have a horse in this race. However, it does feel like it feels like it's time. At the at the very latest, the Xbox event in June, I would imagine. Like that's the absolute latest. But I feel like Silk Song. I feel like we should be playing it by them. To be honest. Yeah, I I think there's a high correlation between ratings and announcement. Sure. The Xbox like, store page that popped up yeah, on April I mean, Fool's Day. Let's talk about, I mean, we saw stuff like this for, what, um, the, the Xbox games. Uh, um, when it came to the Partner Showcase, the, there was Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush. Like, there was a rate. I think it was a ratings for Hi-Fi Rush that had come out. And yeah. sure enough, we got Hi-Fi Rush announcements uh, for PlayStation. So, you know, they, that's, that's just the, one of the more recent examples. AB James adds me, Donkey Kong, Star Fox, F-Zero, Kid Icarus, Punch-Out, all making a return on Switch 2. I think there, think there's a, there's definitely a chance. Wait, which franchises? All of them. All, every franchise? Uh, Donkey Kong, Star Fox, F-Zero, Kid Icarus, and Punch-Out. Yeah, I think that's... Maybe a drop-out, like, Punch-Out. Yeah, Maybe I mean, one. like... Maybe that's a little too optimistic, but I think most of those... I mean, I I, I I think Nintendo is currently working on Donkey Kong, Star Fox, F Zero, and Kid Icarus right now. I want your take on this, Andres. I don't like the F Zero ninety nine disrespect. That is a new game, and it's a fantastic yeah. game. People try to act like F Zero is still dead. It got a new game last year. I understand that like it looks like an SNES game, and it has tracks from the SNES games, and really, it's only tracks from that. But that is a new video game. So I would say F Zero right now is more alive than. Star Fox or Kid Icarus. Just yeah, like, oh, I know. At zero. If you want to go go from that perspective, like you're totally right, and I'll I'll even add to that. Like we we look we think about um like Smash Bros promotion, right? Like you know all the different like trailers and CGI like cutscenes they put together. Captain Falcon was in several of them, and you yeah, know we've trailer, seen yeah. we've seen Smash be used to market different different series. And it, on point the point simply is this. We didn't see Star Fox in any of those. Well, I, we we did actually, but like, like Captain Falcon was like a significant part to this. Like, for example, like we saw Fox in like the, you know, when everyone was there, right? It's not like Fox was not in anything, but like Captain Falcon had a played a kind of a important role in a lot of these sort of like Smash character reveals, um, especially with the DLC ones. And I'm not saying that necessarily means anything, but when you kind of factor that on top of F099, I, I do kind of think it's fair to say that out of the ones we're talking about right now, I mean, uh, say for Donkey Kong, like, yeah, I mean, F Nintendo it reminds us multiple, several, likes to remind us that F0 is a thing. We do, we do have this franchise. Uh, so, and F099, as you said, is a real game with updates. And I, I mean, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Um, I think F-099 is kind of a part of this longer-term marketing plan. You know, I I've, I use, I like to use the example of how, what they did for Pikmin. You know, they had Pikmin 3 Deluxe. They had the Pikmin characters in the Universal Park. Uh, they had Pikmin Bloom. And then it all led to Pikmin 4. I think this is, it's by design. You know, so you see Captain Falcon in the different Smash this in the different Smash reveals. It's very similar to the, the Pikmin characters in, in the Universal Park. It may seem kind of small, but what it is doing, it's it's very subtly sort of reminding people or showing people that hey, this character exists to a large audience, right? And then you have F Zero Ninety Nine, which is free for all Nintendo Switch Online members. So that's another way to tell people, hey, F Zero is a thing. Like Nintendo, this, these are ways to market a franchise, and so Nintendo can now, you know, if the rumors of an F Zero GX remaster are true, they can come out with that, and if that does well, it sets them up for a new game a few years a few years from now, 
Or maybe they skip the remaster and they do the new game. Point is, they have done things. So, yeah, I think there's that plan there. But also, I do agree with you. F-099 is a, is a real game. Like, yeah, you can play and enjoy it. It's cool. It's a what fun else? game. I, I like it a lot. I don't know yeah. if the wires got crossed on that whole GX rumor. But I would be willing to bet we will get a new F-Zero on Switch 2. Like, I think that's probably... Yeah, it, it's definitely possible that the wires got crossed. Um, it's not guaranteed, though. And we, we are getting a lot of GameCube remasters. So, but either way, yeah, to your point, like, I th yeah, F Zero, I would say, has a better chance than most other Nintendo franchises that are currently dormant to come back because it's already back. Someone commented in the chat here. They said, disagree. F Zero 99 is not a new game, it's a testing of the waters. It's not what F Zero ever was, which is an online multiplayer. Do you not think that a new F Zero game would be have an online focus? Because it definitely would. Um, well, it. They say they disagree, but they also kind of still agree with me because they, testing the waters is sure. Yeah, I, I, I can agree. About, it's right? still a test, but it, that doesn't mean it's not a new game. <laughs> so I'm going to try and meet everyone in the middle, right? It's a new game, but it's obviously not a big budget new game. Sure. Yeah. It's an eShop game. It's a free yeah. game. At that. Right. So yeah. Free. But it, it, it's it. I mean, maybe maybe I don't know who it was, but. Like the idea that F Zero isn't maybe like F Zero Nine isn't like representative of of what the series is. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's. First off, different entries in a series are going to have differences. You know, like I know there are some people that may not like to like to think of Tears of the Kingdom as a Zelda game, but it one hundred percent is a Zelda game. It's the most mainline. It's it's as mainline as Zelda is going to get. But yeah, it's a departure from the prior Zelda games, for sure. But then there's also 2D Zelda. Is 2D Zelda not a Zelda game? It absolutely is, right? It kind of reminds also... me it kind of reminds me of like 2015 era Metroid, where like people were trying to act like Metroid was dead. And yeah, five years between Other M and Federation Force is not a great look. And while those games maybe aren't the greatest, Nintendo has never really let Metroid sit that that long. Compared no. to a lot of their other franchises, it actually, I'm actually really glad you brought that up, right? Because I mean, I, I think I, you're you're aware. Like lately, I've been talking about how Nintendo cares about Metroid Prime, right? Yeah. And you kind of think about that, like Nintendo clearly cares more about Metroid than they do about F Zero, than they do oh, about absolutely. Star Fox. Like, I think they care about Metroid more than a lot of their franchises. It, I mean, Metroid's part of the roots. You know, it's one. It was one of their, you know, their big three um, from the NES era, right? The Zelda, Mario, Metroid. Like they were each kind of like their their own their their own take on how to handle like a you know a single player adventure back then. Uh, I would say Mario it's at and least Zelda the took tier, off. At least on the tier of Fire Emblem and Xenoblade for them, like at least. But I think it might be higher. Dreadsale suggests that, right? Yeah. But I guess the 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 wild thing though is that we haven't seen like the full budget effort yet, right? Like Dread is cool. Like, it's really cool. Dread is one of my favorite Switch games, right? But it is a 2D game made by a small, relatively small studio in Mercury Steam. Yes, Nintendo helped out, and yes, they pushed that game. But it isn't, you know, the biggest budget Metroid game that they've been working on for seven years. That's Metroid Prime 4. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that going to achieve, you know? And so that's it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Um... Getting back to the chat, though. Uh, Liz, thank you for letting me know everything looks and sounds great. I really appreciate that. Retro Treats adds me, think we're getting a Switch reveal tomorrow? Haha, <laughs> trolling. <laughs> actually, actually, first Switch 2 game is going to be confirmed at the Indie World. Just you watch. No, it's not going to happen. In case, in case you guys can't tell that I'm, I'm joking. I just choked on my own saliva. That's what I get for joking. Uh, <laughs> it's it's happening this is it <laughs> i'm reaching my end um that's also me joking anyway um jude kerman what i think is going to happen is that brazil was actually right then indie world would happen with a direct happening after maybe um something else that i think should be noted um nate drake on family boards has talked about how the um a, the indie world showcase was always supposed to be in april and so what I find interesting about that is that technically 
Brazil never said that it couldn't happen in April, right? And so maybe he just, you know, some things he just didn't fully understand, which, you know, happens, right? Yeah, Depending I remember his old. his post was like probably March in parentheses. I think that was him just kind of adding his own sense based on exactly. because of GDC happening around that time. Right. Um, but he did say a direct would be in April. Um, now, the problem is, is that there's only one more full week left of April after this week. And typically directs happen during a full week, not like those in between weeks. Um, I don't know why they do that. Like, is there a, 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 like a real reason why directs happen have to happen in a full week? Like, is it not possible that we could get a direct, you know, uh, in the week between um, April 28th and May 4th? It's possible. Like, we don't see it. Well, I don't know why we don't see it. We just don't. Maybe, I mean, maybe it has to do with just, like, a lot of things, um, hap like, you know, like, just, like, you know, the economy, business in general, a lot of things go by a month-by-month -month basis, and maybe they just want to stick to things with to fall within that full month, I guess. Um, I'm not sure why else, like, we kind of have to stick to that pattern, but it, I don't know. I can't think of, it, of a time when it has happened, like, you know, in an in-between week if you could find an example i'd love to see it i'm just but. trying to think like i know there was like the, the april 1st direct um in 2015 but also i've noticed recently the past couple of years they've been doing directs in the second half of months more often mm. it probably doesn't mean anything but like they last usually... year with the june direct exactly and well even the partner direct in february was in the second half of the month that is actually a uh, interesting point now so, to be fair devil's advocate september and february last year was in the first half of the month so right but it used to be like no matter what a direct was in the first two weeks. Yeah. So I mean, but but you bring up a good point though because like maybe they're still re it's it's plausible, you know. Right. Like it, it's not. We have examples where something like this has happened. So I mean, yeah. It also but makes I guess to get it out before endless ocean still. I still think having some sort of quick... I know they did, like, the atmosphere trailer, and I'm kind of expecting, like, maybe a demo drop, honestly, maybe this week on Thursday. But yeah, they could show that in a direct, not have a spotlight on it, but just a quick little headline. I, I, I do think it's odd that that's, that's a published Nintendo title that will not be featured in a general direct. It was, it's been announced, and, and it, it'll have been announced and released, you know, in between general directs if we don't get one before May 2nd, yeah. which, I mean, we're pretty close. That's... Yeah, what would but, I guess, what would the date be if we were to get one? It'd probably be, is that the twenty fifth, twenty fourth or twenty fifth? Yeah, it's also worth noting that Nintendo games release on Thursdays now. I just find that very interesting. Oh, and interesting I don't know, point. I don't know if that matters, but like, that is weird that they changed it for this year. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I do like the idea of a direct happening a week before Endless Ocean, though, because they can give it a big feature and it's still fresh. Yeah, I don't think it would be that week. I, th I yeah, think next course. week is our last chance, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But by the way, pun intended with fresh because we're talking about oh, fish. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where I'm not, I'm definitely not as convinced now as before because we, there, we've we got, we have examples where we get an indie world in April and that's it, you know, and it's pretty late into the month. Um, and the way um, Nate the Hate um, said it, uh, kind of framed it on, on Fanny Boards, this this indie world was always going to happen during this time. And we look at some of like Brazil's posts. Uh, grant, granted, they're kind of speculating, right? But like, they're kind of think like I'm. I don't want to misquote them, so I'm not going to. But I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna ignore that part. Uh, but there is a lot of conversation um, about how maybe what he heard got pushed. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is that based off what Nate the Hate has said, nothing's been pushed. There was always going to be an indie world and at this time. So that's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Does that mean there's a direct next week? He didn't mention the direct in his post at all, but the way his, his wording was, this is how Nate talks on these forums. He, he, hasn't, very, he like, hasn't denied a direct in April right. either. That, I don't think he ever said anything part. about it, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he basically, it, it's all plausible deniability. I mean, there's there's nothing to deny um, because he hasn't said anything. Right. But there have been times when, you know, 
it it's it's kind of one of those things where like we're kind of wondering if there's going to be a direct and he's like yeah it's not going to happen or i don't think it's going to happen he hasn't done that from what i've what i've seen right? i don't think you've seen anything either so it, it's either, interesting no. right and he does um, love playing like koi like i haven't heard about her direct this week and then it happens the next week or something yeah you know um I, I remember when I think it was last year when we had what was it? Yeah, I think it was last year because we didn't have a, the the E three is dead now, right? And we got what was a direct like on June twenty eighth or something. It was, it was like the, the, it was the very end of the month, and a lot of people were thinking, "Oh, there's not going to be a direct in June. The pattern is broken," and like a lot of people were thinking this because Nintendo had some social media posts, and then Nate came out and said, "Oh, I don't know, might still happen," and then it happens next week. So. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't done that either. So I think that should be considered. Um, yeah, guys, I I, 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 I don't want to make any promise. I mean, I'm not making any promise. I don't know. that it's just, I think it's a Yeah, to, to be clear to the chat, we are not saying that Nate the Hate has said anything about an April Direct. Because <laughs> I know people will love to be like, Nate said there was going to be an, an April Direct. No, he never said that. Nope. But it is fun to read into uh, forum posts. Yeah. As long as you don't attack anybody. Yeah. Uh, the real J Stone adds me. What if the June mainline directs going to cover the rest of 2024 lineup early 2025 too? We probably won't have a September direct for another reason. I mean, yeah, if we have to wait till June to get, I mean that that's that would what the pattern would usually suggest, right? That we have to wait till June to get a direct uh, to tell us about, yeah, the rest of 2024 and 2025. That makes sense, but. I don't, if there's anything that's been consistent, it's a September direct, February, June. Those like there's we've we've been given ample reason now to doubt the first and second directs of the year, but that third and final direct, September has been the most consistent time for directs. So I mean, I'm not gonna start down the September direct. If there's any direct I'm gonna have faith in, it's that one. Well, I think he's just saying maybe the Switch Two is getting announced in September. I think that's the idea. I. So maybe there wouldn't be a regular, like Switch One. There'll direct. be some. There'll be something hype for Nintendo. There will definitely September. be something in September. There's no shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, I'll, I mean, I'll jump. I will jump to that conclusion. <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, if we want to go back to 2020, 2020 was as about as hype as it could be for without a direct. I mean, we had directs, but it was the the mini partner showcase and the Mario direct. But within that partner showcase, we, we had the trios for like Age of Calamity, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. It was announced in September, yeah. Yeah, and then Wonder. three All Stars was announced, and a whole bunch of other Mario stuff. Man. Yeah, it they got the job done. We don't have to wait like six months for them to get the job done. Yeah, which is what kind of why I bring it up. Like it, it almost feels like 2020, but it definitely shouldn't feel like 2020 because 2020 was a was was a was a calamity. That's that's what pandemic. I said in my video. I was like, it should not feel like 2020, but it does. <laughs> For now, self-induced switch two delay. Yeah, really. If we, really if we have hard. to wait until like September and all we get in between are partner mini showcases, then all right. And actually, this. interestingly, right, the, the, since we're talking about this, right, twenty twenty. Normally, a July game is already announced by this point in the year. The only other exception is twenty twenty. Another another comparison there, but we did get an announcement for a July game in May. And it was Paper Mario the Origami King. So even if there isn't a direct, and I think Bo agrees with us on this because we were talking about it earlier. Even if there isn't a direct, we both kind of feel they need to announce a July game likely by May because that's how they handle Origami King. And normally we always know about a July game by this point. Like every year of Switch, there's been July games published by Nintendo. And this is the only year, assuming nothing else is announced, where we wouldn't have one. So... Often if we're not getting a direct, game. we're getting an announcement, I think. What would yeah. you say? There's often multiple games in July. Yeah, that we've seen multiple. Look at um, like Octopath and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I know these are third-party yeah. games, but they publish them. Yeah. I think 2019 had three games for some reason. Was it? I think there's a Dragon Quest 11s. Was that part of it? I, th I want. I think, I think it was Builders 2. Builders 2, Ultimate Alliance 3, and Three Houses. Okay. It was July 2019. Was 11s a September game. Yeah, that was like like the week after. I think that launched like oh wait, like within a week of Link. Yeah, Link's Awakening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, September that year actually also had three games because Damon X actually. Machina. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. 
with Astral Chain on the 30th. Dude, 2019, Man, that, like, holiday season, just every week there was something. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah, like, from, like, May to, like, it was the best, the best half year period ever. Yeah. yeah, it was so good. All right, moving on to chat here. Uh, Sky Sword Alyssa says, I still have Hopium for a direct before or around the investors meeting. Hopium. Um, having Hope asked, when is the investors meeting? Uh, May 7th. So that's... Uh, now, would that be May now. 7th at night for us or May 6th at night? Because it always we'll happens probably... at like 11 p.m. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess we'll, I think we'll hear about it on... For us, it'll be May 6th then, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Because they get, they, they're get they 12 hours ahead, give or take, depending on your time right, yeah. zone. Um, but then also, we kind of learned some things afterwards because translations come out and stuff like that, so... But that week, we should learn some things. And sometimes we do get significant announcements. Like, we had an investors meeting uh, late last year where we got the Zelda movie confirmation, right? So it isn't like like this idea that it would just be, like, quotes that have some subtle information we could pull from. Like, sometimes we get something more meaty. But, uh, yeah, it looks kind of caught up to the chat. Oh, uh, Sam Day 13 asked me, uh, what do you think the Switch 2 gimmick will be? Nintendo always has something. Um, so this is what I think the Switch 2 gimmick will be based off what's been happening lately. I think Nintendo... Well, you may know what I'm where I'm going at with this. I think Nintendo's uh, Switch 2's innovation is that it doesn't exist. I think Nintendo is just going to continue to make games for Switch, and they're going to continue to do it until we get used to it, and we're just going to accept the fact that what switch can do is just what games on nintendo can do and so 12 years from now we'll still be playing metroid prime 6 and tears of the wild kingdom 7 on <laughs> on the same system metroid prime 4 at 540p 30 fps gonna go crazy let's <laughs> freaking go so yeah the innovation will be you don't have to buy new systems you just continue to play games on the same system no nah, it's a joke um that won't happen i hope probably um i think i don't i don't know it's kind of hard to predict like a really wacky sort of gimmick um but i i do think nintendo's actually doing a better job of being really quiet now i think maybe one of the reasons maybe may i i know i don't want to jump to the conclusion that gamescom the reason that gamescom is to avoid leaks because they could still have a public presence at gamescom and then the private meetings could just not happen right like they could do one and not they can avoid the other so I don't know if that's why, but I, I do feel like Nintendo isn't just in general um, trying to keep things as under wraps as possible after the initial leaks happened, um, you know, last year and such. But I, I will at least say this from what we have heard. I do think that there's going to be a big focus on loading and maybe that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but I think it actually really is. Um the idea of like basically eliminating loading screens, you know, uh, technically games are always going to have to load, but to minimize it to the point where it's barely noticeable or just essentially non-existent is really impressive, right? Like there was that Breath of the Wild tech demo. Supposedly it was running at 4K60, but apparently, according to Nate the Hate uh, recently, um, the main point of that tech demo was to showcase the loading ability. And they you were to load in from the main startup menu of the game to the actual gameplay instantly which is insane that's saving minutes of time so think about this in practice right it's not just when you start a game that it, it starts up quickly think about whenever you fast travel like when you're playing breath of the wild you see the little blue like energy swirls and it, it's not like you fly up and you see like the loading screen for like a minute and you can read like dialogue or what have you and you wait and then it, and the blue particles come in again and so the whole exchange takes like two minutes no you press where you want to go there you are like it's instant and so that impacts you know the flow of gameplay and it helps to maintain immersion but even going beyond that right if you're loading things in this quickly think about what it could mean for open world games like you see less popping for example uh, textures can get can get loaded in quicker and then things you can just run a lot smoother so like that's that's a big deal this isn't like does it impact like you know what we perceive visually yes but it, it goes beyond just like oh, oh graphics are amazing but like it, it impacts gameplay significantly so i think that's actually it would be a really big deal and it, it'll it'll be one of the you know outside of visual enhancements one of the 
obvious advantages of Switch 2. Yeah, I think just... Part of me, like, yeah, I want them to just go for that raw power a little bit. I want to see Nintendo have as much as powerful of a handheld as they can. Part of me does want that Switch Attach thing to be real, where we just get a, a full-screen Switch. And maybe both could yeah. be true. Um, probably not. I actually Switch Attach, a, a Switch, attack, Switch Attach definitely sounds more like a Nintendo idea, though, than... Yeah. Um, I had an idea recently, though. Because um, I've thought about the Switch Attach idea... And I've kind of thought that it doesn't make any sense overall from a cost perspective. But I think I've changed my mind a little. A little. So when I think about Switch Attach, this idea of two screens being able to slide off and detach from each other, that seems ridiculous. Like having two 8-inch like OLED panels or LCD panels, like that, that seems ridiculous, especially like if the innards are in one, you have to have the Bluetooth in the other. Like that just seems like a lot when you also have a dock and it, like it just seems like too much. And then detachable Joy-Cons, like that's a lot. But what if the Switch... I do I have my Switch here? I do. So what if the Switch, right does have two screens the switch two right and so the way it works it's essentially what this is already you still have joy cons that can slide off right just like that but this part sticks out a little bit it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit thicker because it is two screens and you can slide it up kind of like a ds except instead of flipping you slide up right and you could in theory detach it but the second screen isn't actually that big it's a smaller screen kind of like 3ds and when I think of it like that, it just seems a little bit more plausible to me. Like, if the second screen's really just there, so you can kind of, you know, do some interactions, have a little mini-map, like, I can maybe see that. Still seems unlikely, but when I think of it from that perspective, it just seems a little bit more likely to me. Yeah, it's weird with Nintendo, because sometimes they do just kind of go for... Like, people always say, oh, Nintendo always has their gimmick. And I guess if you count, like, the GameCube handle and the joystick on the N64 controller, I guess, I guess that's true. It was a weapon. But, yeah, it was a weapon. Um, but really, starting with the Wii is when their consoles, home consoles, started having gimmicks. So it's really only two that had, like, a really out there, what you would define as a Nintendo gimmick. Um, so while I don't think it's impossible for them to continue doing that, and while I would like to see two screens, I also don't think it's impossible that they just make a more powerful Switch. I'm kind of 50-50. You know, I, I think it brings up a good point. Like you, you think about the history of like Nintendo consoles. Yes, innovation has always been part of their plan. But to your point, it hasn't always been, hey, let's just go in this really extremely wacky direction. That's that's the blue ocean strategy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the blue ocean strategy, but it's basically this idea of avoiding red ocean right not direct competition but doing your own thing and for a while it gave nintendo some great success with the nintendo ds and the wii some of their most successful systems ever but it didn't last them very long at least in terms of home consoles that's one of the reasons why the wii u failed um somewhat uh so with the switch though i don't know if we call that blue ocean anymore i it's and i'll have to look up the specific definition but I, I think the main point is they can innovate, but that doesn't mean they have to do something really wacky. Right. Like you, you look at N64 and 64 was extremely innovative. You know, it had the memory expansion pack. So it gave the system some flexibility and we saw that Ram expansion, uh, you know, go into effect. You had the N64 controller. It had the joystick that offer, you know, digital movement. And it also had an expansion pack. So you could put in memory, you could put in rumble, you had the GBA transfer pack for Pokemon stuff. Like the N64 controller offered a lot of different applications um, and it, it did evolve gameplay. Also, the, the system had four controller sockets. It really pushed four player multiplayer, which was not really that much of a thing until that generation with N64. Uh, so there was a lot of really cool things that they introduced in that era. And that's just an example. Uh, I kind of ignored the whole 3D gaming thing. That's maybe the biggest innovation, but they weren't trying to do something really wacky. They were just advancing, you know, and doing what they could. And so there may be some wacky ideas. I mean, you look at the N64 controller, it is kind of wacky. And we even argue that, you know, this is wacky. 
like this idea that we have these two little tiny controllers, right? Like, yes, there's a, there's a gray version, but there's a whole bunch of like colored things. Like this was like, oh, this is a, a special edition one. But the point is like they had the whole red and blue joy cons. Like that's not normal. They, they, there is still some wackiness there. And I think with Switch 2, they'll find that, but I think it is going to be more subtle. Uh, so, you know, maybe they bring back Street Pass. Maybe they give us, you know, just overall improvements to the Joy-Cons. And there'll be some nice little subtle improvements. And that's going to be fine. It's going to be a proper evolution of the Switch. There will be some innovations. But it, it's not going to be like, hey, guess remember those Joy-Cons? You don't have Joy-Cons anymore. You, your, your controller is a ball. You hold a ball on each side. Isn't that fun? It's like throwing a ball. You can play games in real life by throwing balls and in video games by throwing balls. I know. We at Nintendo, we are geniuses. That's not what should add, They should add a 4K rumble to the controllers. 4K rumble. 4K rumble. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. It's going to be so good it hurts. I will be okay with Nintendo just making a more powerful device as long as they... I'm actually a, I'm a I'm a Nintendo Switch Online defender, but I want sure. the console to feel more complete. I want trophies. I was tweeting about it yesterday. Add trophies, add more okay. social stuff, and okay. I'll be fine. Yeah, who was it? Were you were you did you respond to that thing on Twitter about like achievement? Like people were talking about achievements, like not it wanting them. To, apparently, there seems to be this common thought coming around recently where people don't really want achievements, and I'm like. Why would you not want the option? I think um, Andre Seeger from Game Explained talked about like how he doesn't like force achievements, and I'm just like, then turn them turn... off. Yeah, on PlayStation, I know on PlayStation you can, you can turn off the notification, so just turn them off. It just adds more value to a game, and I promise you, developers love them because it just increases engagement with basically no effort. Metroid has achievements. Yeah, that, well, that's the thing too. Most Nintendo games have achievements. Yeah, they're just the game, done. They're just done <laughs> on a game by game basis. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I personally, them. I don't really care about achievements that much personally, but I also not bothered by them. They just they to exist. act like they're a nuisance is silly. I feel yeah. Like. I mean, maybe you can do a thing where, like, when you do your system setup, there's a question that prompts, "Do you want achievements?" Yeah, sure. So you can pick it because I am I, I do somewhat understand the idea that like, for example, like on my PlayStation, I have achievements on. They're there. They don't bother me, but, you know, they exist. Right. Uh, and I don't remember ever saying I wanted them. Now, if I really, if really bothered me, I would go into settings and look for a way to get to turn them off. Right. But, you know, when during my system setup, could they have given me a question? Hey, do you like to see? you know, notifications of achievements during gameplay. And I'd be like, eh, I don't know. I'll just put no, right? And then that's it, you know, that they could do that. Um, but otherwise, like, I, I think the idea to just suggest that there can't, that there shouldn't be achievements, like, who's it hurting? By saying that, you literally want less value out of a game. Like, if someone says that, I feel like. It, it just adds more value for the people that like them. I mean, maybe it comes from maybe it comes from the perspective of that if they don't do achievements, they could put their resources elsewhere. I don't. Pretty I good don't. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe, it, maybe that's the thought. I don't know. Like, what would you do? In I mean, I'll, well, okay. So let's put up a poll. Actually, I think it would be an interesting poll. All right. What would you prefer as a feature? on switch two achievements street pass oh yeah i would yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. i wouldn't <laughs> street pass is great though street pass is really good yeah what would you prefer as a feature on switch two? achievements street pass now my concern is how many people know about street pass versus achievements more people should know what achievements are versus street pass however Nintendo fans should probably be more aware of Street Pass and achievements. Because, you know, 3DS versus achievements never being on Nintendo. The thing for me console. is I don't really take my Switch out. Like when I was young, I took my 3DS with me everywhere. I don't. Switch oh, here's me. a potential innovation. What if you can just take a Joy Con with you? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Dude, that's actually that's actually a good idea because then they can do stuff with Pokemon too. Yeah, exactly. That's actually a, that's why haven't they done that? Actually, why haven't they done that? That's a oh. that's a fantastic idea. I think you're cooking. 
I think you're totally cooking. Because I guess I, is there no I way might, to I might Wiimote? overcook here. I might overcook here. Because even on the Wiimote, you could like transfer your me between Wii's. You can't I do think so. anything like that on Switch. That's interesting. Yeah. Um I remember that. I mean, we don't need the we don't need the infrared sensor. Like, get rid of that. Give us give us a way to kind of hold some some subtle data. That they, they can do that. That would be that would be neat. And going back to the idea of the attach, like if there is like a detachment and it's say it's not the Joy Cons, right? If that detached thing is something, you know, it maybe it just kind of increases the portability of the console. Um, you know, that that's just something. Something there. This poll is is divided, bro. It's 50-50. 30 votes in, it's 50-50. That's that's crazy. That's why they need that at both. You know? I, yeah. Man. The idea of bringing a single Joy-Con out, though, is actually genius. I've never thought Thank about you. that. The only counterpoint, I would say, is maybe... Like, the idea of like having Pokemon transferred in it for like Pokewalker functionality. Pokemon Company will probably want to sell that on their own. As they have done with the Pokemon Go accessories. Sure. But it also doesn't have to be just for Pokemon. That's true. I'll also throw out just a little addition. What if there was like a small little screen on the Joy-Con to reflect this? Like it doesn't have to be anything significant. Like maybe almost like a like a little like a, you know like those little green like digital screens. They probably yeah. wouldn't go that cheap, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, like just something to show like some level of data, and yeah. you can interact with it somewhat. Just a Joy-Con. It would be kind of neat. <laughs> you can play games on just the Joy-Con. Like what? It, like what if you could play like Pong or something on there? <laughs> you like play, that you play would be Tamagotchi or something. Oh. That'd be crazy, but yes, exactly. <laughs> oh man, it'd be, it'd be kind of it would it would be neat. All right, we got a super chat here. It is R three light? Thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Um, they ask, what about if you just have the Nintendo Switch app on your phone and get street passes with other people with the app on their phone? Bro, you spend some fire right here. It's that not made, just, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I think some people will be pissed because, you know, Switch Online app, there's like, you know, the, the initial Switch Online app has put a bad taste in our mouths, you know. Um, what's interesting about it, though, is that a lot of us would prefer just to kind of communicate through Discord, right, which would be used on our phones to play each games with each other. In theory, if the Switch Online app works in the same way for, like, communicating with each other, then it wouldn't be so bad. But I remember giving it a try when Switch first came out, and it was not that good. It was kind of bad. Um, but in terms of, like, the idea of just having the app on your phone and the and Street Pass works in that way, I guess the question is, do phones function like that, and is it okay? Um, they would need your location at all times for the app. You have to approve that if you open it yeah but then that's also that's online based and that's not even like you know local based it's it's definitely it's it's definitely technologically possible right like i don't see right. why it's not i guess the question is do people want to have like the bluetooth on their phones on and do they want that bluetooth exchanging with everyone around them there's some privacy issues that could potentially be there i guess um, I mean, I, I'm not concerned about having Bluetooth on my, on my thing, but you know, the idea of like connecting your phone to someone else's phone, I don't, I, I don't, again, I'm not like a master of understanding these things, but it feels like more of a, a privacy issue, Security least, risks. right? Or at least it's something that concern a lot more people and might not appeal to as large of an audience as opposed to, Hey, this is on your switch. It's separate from your phone. It's separate from your personal life. There's no real risk here. It's just one switch connecting to another, you know? Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a difference. That said, though, do I like the idea of just, hey, I have the app on my phone. I, I'm always going to have my, my phone on me. And so whenever I get back to my switch, my phone automatically connects to my switch or my switch to and transfers over any sort of street pass data I might have had by, throughout the day. That would be amazing, honestly. It probably would be the best way to, to do it, too, because to your point from earlier, you don't take your switch everywhere with you, right? But you do take your phone. So that would be the best way to maximize street pass in theory. 
but again, the security risk. So I, I, that's that's maybe what would what might hold it back. The Joy-Con idea is maybe like a little bit of a stopgap. It's easier to take with you, but also it's still something you have to take with you that you may not want to take. Yeah, in the case of 3DS, at least you are taking something with you that you can like use. But if you just attach yeah. a Joy-Con you're carrying around with you, what are you gonna do with it? Is it yeah. gonna be in what your backpack or in your pocket? What if it's not even the Joy-Con? What if it's something even smaller? Like it's like saying a they can slot or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a little bit bigger because it maybe we're kind of like a Tomodachi or something. Like it's a little small digital screen, maybe a couple buttons. Um, the main point is for just Street Pass, but also it can maybe transfer over save data, right? Because remember back in the the GameCube days, right, or just other consoles, you could have memory stick in your GameCube, right? And you wouldn't have to take you were going over to your friend's house, who else has a GameCube, but you don't have your save file. And you have all the characters in melee unlocked, so you take your memory your memory card, plug it to your 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 friend's GameCube, and then he already has melee, but all the characters are unlocked because using your your save file. We've lost that in in today's era, right? You can't just bring over your save file; you have to bring over your whole system or transfer over your sign account in and right? download it from the cloud. Like yeah, uh, so it would be cool if like there was a little like, and that would be very Nintendo actually, right? Because it would be seemed like this weird wacky idea, right? So it's like imagine. I don't know, maybe something like this, right? This is like, a, I don't even use this, but um, let's say it's something like this, that in theory, you could, it, there's a compartment in your Switch, it just slides into, right? And it has a little screen on it with a couple buttons for interaction. Maybe there are some simple games that devs program in there, but it's mainly for street pass and taking save and your own save files over to other people. Um, and that's kind of what it does. It's a neat little thing. It gets the job done. It's easier. It's easier to put this in my pocket than it is to put a Joy-Con. So yeah, that'd be very Nintendo. To have something like that. I would love it. Yeah, I would love it. And maybe they could even like do other things like with it, like um, you know, the the standard things they like to do with like smaller, like you know, the the Poke Walker, right, where it measures your steps and things like that. They could program it with something like Ring Fit Adventure, where it's so if it can measure your steps, it could transfer save data. If it does street pass, there's a lot of little cool functionalities they could put in something like that i nintendo does love making yeah. like health uh, uh yeah accessories that kind of thing so if it's an all-in-one maybe not something that comes with the switch at that point but something that they would sell extra for sure sure yeah or... i will say though my idea would attach to the switch it would just attach sure. in there you go but yeah that that's the idea it would be cool it would be cool Anyway, um, I don't know. I think we kind of, we could probably talk for a little bit more, but I don't know. Is there anything you want to bring up, Bo? Um, I mean, we haven't really discussed Switch 2 at all. Were we, were we planning on discussing Switch 2 reveal timing here? Are we still expecting it before May 7th? Some sort of a press release. Yeah, um, so where I personally stand is I, I want to see how this direct thing is going to pan out, you know? Um, if the rumor is true, then we kind of know by next week, right? Yeah. Or don't, right? Like, and so by that point, I think it, it does impact things. Um, like part of the frustration for me is that I almost have this sense that Nintendo is kind of like continually pushing it back. I, I do not know. Every, every week it's delayed another week. Right, like, um, but I guess what I'm kind of getting at here is that at first we're kind of told, all right, sometime in the second half of 2024. Then we're told, all right, early 2025. But then some of the reports start sneaking in at the earliest. And I'm trying, it's almost like getting to the point where like, okay, well, what if early 2025 is like the optimistic perspective now, you know? And so we start talking about, okay, well, what's more realistic? Is summer 2025 more realistic? Excuse me. Or are we already at a point where we start talking about, like, holiday 2025, right? I mean, some people would argue that maybe that makes the most sense because you don't want to announce something, you know, and bastardize a holiday. I'd argue you have to announce the system at some point, right? But if the system's not coming out to holiday 2025, then guess what? They can wait till, you know, announcing it in the middle of the year. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, which would be really frustrating. Um, 
especially if, like if it somehow does not come out until let's say let's say september next year would you still believe it was ever intended for 2024 because i think at that point it would be undeniable that 2024 was never even in the cards because that's a um, massive delay I, I will concede that I am a very gullible person <laughs> in the sense that when I see a lot of evidence and it conflicts, I can, I can see that, right? I think I'm good at that stuff, but I just inherently believe people, you know, unless there's evidence to, to suggest otherwise. Um, this definitely impacts me when it comes to my own personal relationships in real life. So I'll, I'll just put that out there. Um, I, my heart's been broken many times, my friends. But in terms of, uh, like, this situation with the... I mean, I don't believe that Nick Hay and Bloomberg and VGC and, and Eurogamer are full of it. I mean, they've reported on things that have turned out to be true. So the implication is that they only report on some things to be true and some things they just collectively make up together i don't believe that i don't think it's a conspiracy like that um i on i i do think that there are just some things that you know like a year and a half delay is more believe it's, it's possible right like let, let's talk about um the tears of the kingdom situation i do not believe that Nintendo ever thought that May 2023 was going to be the release date when they announced it back in summer 2019. Definitely not, no. Um, you know, and I, I don't think they just... I think, I mean, they announced a direct sequel. Like, same, same art style, right? It's taking place in the same location. I think, you know, they announced it, and then they got into the game, and they're like, hey... We want to make this game totally physics based. Oh, so that means you have to change every single object and make sure it's based off the physics engine. Yep. Oh, that's going to take a very long time. Yep. And then the pandemic happened and then they wanted polish. And then we, we get to May 2023, right? Um, so I, I just think that, you know, plans are slightly changed. But granted, that's all development though, right? With all development, the way they kind of go at it, they have a history of, hey, we're doing some good things here, but we just realized we can make this game even better. So screw the deadline. We're we're just going to continue to work on this game until we feel good about it. Um, I don't think it's the same scenario with the system. With the system, there's other there's a lot of other factors. The different factors, though. If, if we assume, I, I, the other problem is that like there's different reports and rumors out there, right? So which ones do you choose to believe? Which ones do you do not choose to believe? I mean, based off the NVIDIA leak, we do know that there is a T239 chip out there. And it had it had something that mentioned Switch, right? Like, like a, some sort of Switch format. So we do believe that that's, at least at one point, was supposed to be for Switch 2, you know? Um, and there have been others that have kind of piggybacked on that idea. And there was a, a suggestion that the system could have been, in theory, ready as early as, you know, last year. Not even 2024. So, you know, I think it's just kind of tricky to like sort of thinking about the timing of, oh, can we like keep. I think odds are it's not, we're not going to have to wait till holiday 2025. I don't think we have to. Yeah, wait I, I still yeah. think March next year. Maybe April yeah. if they would be weird about it, but yeah. It, March. But I, I guess the point is, though, is that right now we, we, we really don't know what's going on. And I think. That's in somewhat by design. I think Nintendo is closing off. And maybe that's kind of what some of the frustration is right now. I think Nintendo, there were a lot of leaks and Nintendo's now like, you know what? We're, 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 we're closing out the leaks, you know, unless your name is Pioro. So maybe it's, he doesn't, he hasn't tweeted anything about the indie world. A little weird so the insiders have have not been as good as they as they were over the last few years and yeah. so with that kind of actual with this lack of knowledge we have now compared to what we've had in the past it's maybe making it a little bit odder on what's going to happen yeah i don't basically to, to, to sum up my random rant 
I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> that that's pretty much. I mean, it. that's all anybody can say. Yeah, I will yeah, say to support the idea of it originally being intended for this year. I can't. I, I've mentioned it to you a couple times in DMs. Yeah. Level five announced an event for April. We have. We do not have a date is, for that event. They haven't. That they haven't weird. officially delayed like, it either beyond, yet. Be, yeah, exactly. Beyond any rumor, you know, whatever. Take everything with a grain of salt. Level five did confirm an event for April with no date, and we still don't know about it. Which to me it suggests that something changed, at least for them, in terms of that Yokai Watch game they were going to announce, or the release date for, I don't know, Professor Layton or, or something, which I do think is odd. Because they have a lot of games announced for Switch right now. Uh. It's so late. I mean, maybe they maybe we see we hear an announcement next week or something. Yeah, like, I mean they, it's th there's still time, but they they're not like Nintendo where they announce it like a day or two beforehand. Usually their their level five visions are announced a couple weeks in advance. Well, I mean it's already April so 16th. I, exactly. So, so if we if it's happening this month, I would say they have to say something this week. Yeah, yeah. It's so curious, and maybe they're gonna announce that it's been delayed. Sure, something would be nice. If and it if it's delayed, delayed <laughs> why would it be delayed? Yeah, because Switch Two was delayed. I mean, let, let's go back to the. What is it? Uh, Fantasy Life. They said they were. So, they they initially said, "Oh yeah, we, the game. We already know for a fact the game's coming out this summer. We already have a date in mind. Actually, like, but we're just not gonna say it publicly." And then the next time they talk about the game, actually, it's coming out in October. Yeah, that one I'm less weirded out by, but it is definitely still weird. It's just weird. Yeah, it, I don't. Not saying it's. We haven't announced it for any other Switch platforms, too, but, right? Well, that was yeah. the thing, right? Maybe it was coming to PlayStation or something, but that hasn't been announced yet. So. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. Uh, right now, it's just a it's just a very weird, curious time. Um, we shouldn't have to wait very long to get some answers. Well, we're, we know. have the investors meeting on May seventh. That's going to give us something. If we get nothing else, we have that. So we'll see. We'll see. I guess you know I'm going to end the poll here because what's that? I app? think I think the well achievements was winning. I could have, in oh. theory, left it go on for longer, but, you know, I, I think I wanted to ask another question. That's why I ended the poll, um, so we could for to close out, the closing poll. Um, but for this poll, I, you know, I had asked earlier, what you prefer as a feature on Switch 2? We got 68 votes, and 52% said they would prefer achievements. So it was pretty close, but uh, most people would prefer achievements over Street Pass. Very interesting. Most is probably more people. Most is... Yeah, doesn't, doesn't it sounds a right. little disingenuous. Yeah, yeah, the majority by a slim margin. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm gonna put one more poll up here, and it's kind of it's gonna me kind of open up like a little final little talking point before we close out here, and it's just um, does Nintendo's silence frustrate you? So, you know, like uh, us as content creators, you know, we're more biased on this, right? Because when they don't talk, we have less to talk about. Uh, so it makes it more challenging for us. Uh, but do you in any way kind of feel like Nintendo is handling whatever it is that they're doing right now poorly? It's easy to feel entitled to like right? information. The reality is... They are marketing in the ocean. They have been tweeting about Thousand Year Door. The reality is they're doing fine. I know I know people are very critical of how Nintendo market stuff. Obviously, we both analyze their marketing a lot. Yeah. Um, but if we have to wait until June for a direct and like, any substantial information, in my opinion, it's not that big of a deal. I do think it is a weird, quiet period and overall with Endless Ocean being the only first-party game announced so far this year. But, I don't know. I've, I've learned to just accept accept it, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um. So, this is how I feel about it. And I'm going to use an analogy, so bear with me. Um, I'm a fan of the Miami Heat. I, I'm from, I live in Miami. I'm still in Miami. Oh, I left Miami for like 10 years, but I've always been a fan of the Miami Heat because it's my hometown. I think it's a great team, a great organization, right? It's a basketball team, an NBA basketball team, if you don't know. And 
over the last five years, they've actually been the winningest team in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, you go by postseason, the time that matters the most, playoffs, they are, they're technically the best team. But in the regular season, they don't perform really well. They were the, they're the A seed this year. We'll see what happens. They were the A seed last year. You know, there was a seat. There was a time they were the first seed. They got bounced in the first round. But whatever, they're not the first seed. They go all the way to the finals or, the, or almost the finals. Um, and so what I'm getting at here is that I believe in this team. And I have reason to believe in this team. They've had years where they've shown that they are one of the best and they can do some incredible, miraculous things, even if they don't have all the superstar power. But sometimes when I'm waiting for them to get to that point, it's kind of hard to believe in them because they're not beating, they're not showing that they're better than their competition all the time. And so relating that to Nintendo, I mean, uh, the, the same way I'm a huge fan of the Miami Heat, my favorite basketball team, I'm a huge fan of Nintendo, my favorite video game company. And so I do root for them. You know, I do want them to do well. Does that mean I don't play other games? I play other games. I also watch other basketball teams, just for the record. But what I'm getting at here with the analogy, there are times where Nintendo shows they are the best. They create some of the greatest games ever. But then there are other times, the in-betweens, where it's kind of rough. And they run on underpowered hardware. Somehow they still find a way to get it done. But I feel like this is where we're kind of at right now, right? Like, I'm waiting for the Heat to perform in the playoffs, but in the regular season, it was kind of mediocre for my expectations of them. And I have these really high expectations for Nintendo, but we're at a point right now where it's an in-between. So they're just not going to deliver, you know, the best possible experiences all the time. That's just not reasonable. And so that's where we're at, really. It's just an in-between. And that's it. Um, They're not always going to be the most exciting company ever. It's not possible. I do think last year was a cautionary tale because, and the same thing's happening this year where a lot of people are saying there's no games. I mean, last year was the whole thing with like the no major games after Zelda. We are in a very similar position. Although the games announced right now are less exciting than Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin 4. We didn't know about the entirety of the second half of the year's lineup until late June. So, I feel like people are jumping to the conclusion a little too much that there's nothing this year. Nintendo always, pretty much always comes through, in my opinion, in terms of lineup. For every year of the Switch, except for 2020, in my opinion. So, like, you just gotta be patient. I know it's unfortunate right now, but I do not believe they have nothing exciting coming this year. I actually, I might, I dislike 2018 more than 2020. That's fair. Yeah. I I bought all the Wii U ports. I'm a sucker. So, like, I was I was constantly playing stuff that year. And even sure. though I didn't like Let's Go um, at the time, I enjoy it now in retrospect. Yeah. We saw it Smash Bros. and Torna. So, like, it was fine. It was good. But I really don't like Age of Calamity, basically. That's what this comes down uh, to. Or, uh, or uh, New uh, Horizons. New Horizons, I'm not a huge fan of either. So, for me, those were their two biggest games. And, you know. Yeah. I guess for me, right, a um, huge Xenoblade fan. So Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was big. Animal Crossing was solid for me. Not not big, but it was, it was solid. Yeah, I probably put right. like 50 hours into yeah. it. It's fine. It's just not something I played yeah. Well, actually, years. wait, am I wrong with Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles? That wasn't a 2020 game, was it? No, yeah, it, was. it was May. It was May. May 2020. Right, right okay. And then Origami and then King was Origami July. King. Still need to play that. Yeah. The last major Switch game I have not played. I it's a say. good... It's, I, if you, I know some people don't like it because they're because they prefer the older Paper Mario games, but it's just a good adventure game with a somewhat challenging puzzle RPG battle system. But I think it's it's pretty. I'm good. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I like Sticker Star, man. <laughs> I I mean, I think it's definitely better than that. So you know. Yeah, exactly. Like I think Sticker Star is a good like game. Fine. People be hating on it too much, so I'm sure I'll enjoy Origami yeah. when I get to it. But I mean, yeah, that I mean, I mean that for me, the Origami King made 2020 a much better year for me. Um, and then I liked Age of Calamity, uh, so there's that. I also was very excited to play Super Mario 3D All Stars, even though it was, sure. you know, yeah, three barely remastered old, old Nintendo games. But uh, yeah, for me, it was better. Um, 2018, obviously, Smash is 
I would say Smash is bigger than all the games I mentioned for 2020, but that was the game at in December. We had to wait until December to get to that point. Um, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was solid, but you know, it was just solid for me. And everything else was kind of... Yeah, Torna, like, Torna like, helped, but, yeah, yeah. Torna, Torna's fantastic. I liked Tennis Aces, although Mario Sports games are sure. like, take it or leave it. Star Allies yeah. is the worst Kirby game on Switch, if we're talking like mainline Kirby. Yeah. But I don't know. It was fine. I feel like there was something to play every couple months at least. Not even yeah. counting the Wii U ports. Octopath was that year. I was good. I I would I would say I was thinking about this the other day. I do assuming there's not any sort of shall drop game for April. And to be honest with you, the closer we get to May, it seems less re- doesn't really make sense to shall drop a game. But they could still do it. Um, but you know, assuming there's nothing in April. I would argue that these first three months, um, first four months of the year, might be the the weakest third of any year on during Switch. I think that's actually Maybe statistically t- true based on Metacritic. I think there actually is some like analytical thing you can take it, from this. You know, like, it's funny about I don't think I don't think anything's in the eighties this year for Nintendo. Twenty seventeen. It only has two months of that third, and I would say it's it blows out this third out of the water. This breath of the wild, yeah. <laughs> also, Mario Kart. We had Snipper Clips. Like, oh sure, yeah, yeah. I was One two first, switch, I like, guess, but that's kind of meant to me. Kirby so, Battle Royale on 3DS. Come on. Oh, when I count 3DS, yeah. So that's, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got a couple super chats here. Uh, Sam talks games. Honestly, Phil Contenders dropped the ball in a smooth transition. They have games, yes, but are they truly hype inducing? No, they're not. Um, you know, like listen, the bit, the bet. I think the biggest, mo- best game that's currently like announced for this year is Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. But it's a GameCube game. It's a remake of a GameCube game and a hell of a good one. But like, I, I, I think. The only like endless ocean is niche. I can we can talk. Bo and I could talk about it all day, but we know the games probably may not even hit a million copies. That's so. what I was gonna say. I don't even know if it'll hit a million. Like we were talking, right. hopefully it gets some like TikTok, you know, uh, right. traction and it like really blows up. But it's probably not gonna sell even a million copies. Yeah, we might. Maybe we can like message Mr. Beast or something or PewDiePie. Promote in the ocean, luminous, please. Right. They, and if, I think PewDiePie doesn't like Nintendo, but he probably doesn't even realize it's a Nintendo game, so he might do it. It's true. Yeah. Um, but the point is, you know, like, Princess Peach Showtime, it, it only it appeals to, to a particular audience. And that's that. it just is what it is. Um, I'm very yeah. excited to see the sales numbers for that, by the way. I bet it will continue to... I bet it's going to have good evergreen sales. Yeah, it should yeah. do well in the holiday if there's not anything else that family-friendly yeah. major. No, it, it's going to be the kind of game you see the box. Like, if you're, like, you know, a parent, right, and you have, like, a six-year-old uh, girl who has a Switch and she wants, like, why wouldn't you? Like, you're going to buy that yeah. for your kid. Like, I think totally. that's that's an important thing to talk about, too, when talking about the transition from Switch 1 to Switch 2. We in this sphere, everybody watching this stream... The reality is we're all going to buy the Switch 2. It doesn't matter when it comes out. It doesn't matter what games come out with it. We're all going to get it. You're watching an Andres restart stream. Probably. The question is, how does the general public feel? And I think the answer to that is most people don't even... I don't know. Switch games are still selling fine. That's that's the thing that you can take away from Nintendo's investors meetings and their slides. Their first party games are still selling fantastic. There are a couple examples like Engage kind of underperformed, I would say. But Mario RPG remake selling like what? I don't, I don't think we had exact numbers for it, but it was, like, really selling well. Um, Here's the Kingdom selling, what, 20 million in, like, a month or two. I think the general public isn't even thinking about Switch 2, to be completely honest. I don't know. Um, They'll be excited for it when it gets announced, but... I think it gets tricky because there is, there is the, that vocal minority, right? And so, like... And maybe we maybe we are a part of the vocal minority in this case, right? We're like, yeah, Switch Two, we need Switch Two. Switch sucks. Come on, but like, yeah, I, mean, I I think that think what you say is valid. Now, we do we do see that sales are trending downwards, but it's a slow trend, right? It's not drastic. Yeah. Um, as, as, it's not as drastic as a console 
in its seventh year should be or eighth year sure are we in the, eighth the year? we are in the eighth year so right yes. considering it's in the eighth year that's why i'm curious to see like princess peach showtime sales and see how thousand year door and luigi's mansion 2 do because while two of those are old games i bet they're still gonna sell really well luigi's mansion 2 especially i think that game is gonna sell a lot yeah and you know i'm actually my mind is changing uh, on metroid prime 4 um probably purely out of the fact that i just want to play the damn game um but you know there was a while i was like hey i want to wait for the cross-gen version but if switch 2 is not coming out march 2025 like if it's if switch 2 is coming out summer or later i need metro prime for this holiday like i'm just, I, i'm saying that strictly as like a, this is like a self i'm talking i'm speaking like a, from a selfish perspective but i also think it makes sense like i think you know if we're talking about a November Metro Prime 4 release and Switch 2 is coming out in March, I'm definitely going to be like, okay, what the hell, Nintendo? We should have just waited for launch window and get that as a cross-gen game. But if Switch 2 is not coming out till summer or later, Metro Prime, I think at that point, we're talking about like a half year gap or more. You know, then I'm like, oh, okay, maybe we should just get Metro Prime 4 now, you know? Yeah, I think that depends on what other games they have this year i mean if there's a donkey kong game i don't know if that would cancel out metroid prime 4 also releasing and either way i think metroid prime 4 will be the best selling metroid game with how yeah offers no matter how, selling, no matter how much how, yeah and, and that's the thing again this like inner circle of gamers is there actually like a, a general thirst for metroid prime 4 i do not know but if it's one of their big games this year on the switch with a install, install base of 140 million it's gonna outsell dread am i i think so anyway i hope yeah. so I, I think I just want this game to be the most impressive thing ever. And I think about what Switch can do, and I'm like, eh, can it be the most impressive thing ever on Switch? Probably not. But also, if it was built with Switch in mind anyways, even the, the Switch 2 version is only going to make better. it look... It, yeah, it'll run it, smoother, maybe, but that... Yeah, it is It is what it like is. It, like, it wouldn't be designed around those load times, for example. There wouldn't be no rift apart, you know, insane load time, you know, you know showcases in it. If it was... If it is a Switch One game, basically. Are Whereas sure? if it is if it is developed for Switch Two, then maybe. But are we sure about that though? Like, um, I haven't played Rift Apart, so I haven't played it yet. But so you're saying that with Rift Apart, they had some really impressive loading feats. Yes. Okay. Yes. There are some things in that game that, while they probably could be done on PlayStation, it would significantly change aspects of the game in terms of how you how the game functions. Okay. And, and I understand where you're getting at. Like, you kind of have to develop the game in mind, you know, with an SSD in mind and all of that in order to, to better take advantage of some of these features. But the reason why I'm only giving you some pushback here is because I go back to that Breath of the Wild tech demo where Breath of the Wild is a Wii U Switch game, right? And they have this tech demo where they're showcasing at a 4K60, supposedly, right? And it has immediate load times. Sure. So, like, instantaneous. Now, granted, it's a tech demo, right? Maybe it's just showing hypothetically what it could do and it's and by hypothetical it's like you know it's not even running it's just okay this is what it could in theory do you know yeah um, i mean there's always benefits yeah. to just having that's an ssd or just fast loading i'm playing final fantasy yeah. 16 right now and you can fast travel in like two seconds it's great it's so just inherently cool. opening a map in metroid and being able to fast travel should metroid do any of the prime games have fast travel is that a thing i know i know the 2d games do i've only played metroid prime one because i don't know um should a metroid prime game have fast travel would that kill an aspect of the game a little bit? I mean, there's... If it's open world, I would argue it needs fast travel, but... So, you have to get to certain points to move elsewhere, so it's not yeah. like you can pull up a map and zip over yeah. to another checkpoint. Um, I do think they should bring that in. Um, like, I think, you know, every time you get to a save station, like, almost treat like a save, like a save station, like a side of grace from, like, Dark Souls games. Like, you get to it, yeah. okay, cool. Now you can just fast travel to any other safe station you've been to um i think that's how they should do it um but they haven't in the prime games that's what i was thinking yeah they definitely yeah. should especially if they, the game is bigger, if they go for a bigger kind of world yeah. totally and i'll also tell you right i i've mostly only been playing elden ring on my ps5 right because i recently picked up a ps5 and so i haven't been able to enjoy like the instant loading because well, Elden Ring's not made specifically for PS5, right? It, it's it's ported over, so while it may load better than you know, say on PS4, right? It's not going to be 
like you know it's not taking full advantage of that so to your point metro prime 4 may run and load better but not necessarily fully however though another pushback we don't know like it what how long have they been aware of that they want to have a switch 2 version for a long time whatever they're developing both versions in tandem sure and if that's the case then you know they could take more full advantage of that but these are what ifs like we're, we're at a point where we don't know when switch 2 is going to come out we don't know when metro prime 4 is going to come we're out we're speculating on a logo from 2017 man yeah <laughs> we do have the jeff grubb stuff that's that where he said that marking supposed to kick off uh in may and that the game's supposed to come out this year that Which would also, line up with a late April direct. Now that was probably yeah. outdated information, but I do think that's interesting. I was thinking about that earlier. That that's and when I initially heard that, I was like, yeah, this is probably outdated because we got we heard about that stuff around when the switch to delay was reported. So mm -hmm. I was like, hey, it might be outdated information, unless I I mean I don't know. I kind of want it to happen because if we don't have switch to this year. At least get like I want something hype, you know? Like, and it doesn't have to be Metro Prime Four. You brought up Donkey Kong. I would love a new Donkey Kong game, you know? Like I'm less confident in that than Metroid this year. I don't know what to think. They could All I know is it could be both. It could and be none. Mario Party. Could it be could none. be none. Yeah. Could Maybe we're none. just getting Mario Party this year and that's it. Yeah. Um I would play the Mario Party game, I guess. <laughs> Mario Party is pretty good. I got another super chat here from Taker610. Would you guys be shocked that they gave us a code name and launch month at the investor meeting? No, I wouldn't, actually. That's what I'm that's what I've yeah. been expecting. As we yeah. get closer to that date, I'm getting a little bit of cold feet here. But I really yeah. hope it does. Yeah, I mean if it releases cool. next March, I think some sort of acknowledgement there makes the most sense. Yeah. Um or maybe right before they could do a press release. Is stream still running? It says it still has a timer in the top left. People in chat are still talking. Okay. I don't know. It's just weird. It looks like it, I think, I think, I think it we're shut down for a second. Maybe YouTube crashed or something. I don't know. Anyway, it, it be what it be. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, I would not be shocked. That's kind of what I've been pulling for, if not right before the investors meeting, at the investors meeting. So, I will say, if we don't hear anything around May 7th, I will become less confident in March 2025. I'm still, yeah. gonna, I'm still gonna hope for it, but I, I do think that would be pretty, that'd be not, not a good sign for March 2025. It would not be. Yeah, like... Nintendo's being really quiet about the system. Like they haven't acknowledged its existence. So like we're at, we're just asking for an acknowledgement. <laughs> Acknowledge us, Nintendo, please. Yeah. So anyways, next super chat here. Um, Daniel Vargas. Thank you for super chat as well. Thank you for all the super chats, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh Daniel says, You're such a Miami with that charcoal tank top. It's like an old Dragon Ball Fighters thing. So I'm not fighters, just Dragon Ball Super. Um, so I don't know if that's Miami, but maybe it's like Miami slash nerd. <laughs> nerd. So, it's fusion of the two. So there you go. Uh, one true brick asked me, do you think Nintendo will drop the four for Metroid Prime 4 so New Yorker fans don't feel required to play the first three? It's becoming a trend in a lot of the franchises to do that. Um... I mean, Pikmin 4, you know, yeah, still became the, the best selling in the series while still maintaining the 4. Splatoon 2 and 3 did just fine. Luigi's Mansion 3. Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion, Mansion 2. 3. One, like, what, 15 years after the original? Yeah. I think Nintendo, Nintendo actually likes numbers quite a bit. Like, you don't really think about it, but they do. Um, yeah. Pick, pick if, if Metroid Prime wasn't going to be called 4, because I've thought about this a lot. On paper, it sounds like a good idea to drop the four to a, appeal to everybody, but they didn't do it for Pikmin Four, so I don't think they're gonna do it for Pik uh, Metroid Prime Four. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know. Uh, we I think we just think we just have a good a lot of good examples. Uh, so that where they don't where they keep the number, it it works out just fine. In theory, though, 
I agree. You don't need to have the number. I think you handle like the like the the Metroid the two D Metroid series where the number exists, but it's not part of like the the, the box art. It's just hey, yeah, this is Metroid Five or that, and but it's also Metroid Dread. So like I think that's how they they should do it, but we'll see. Probably not based off how Nintendo's handled most of their other games. Anyways, um, I think we've pretty much reached the end of, to you know, all the chats. I have nothing else I need to say. I don't know if there's anything else you want to mention, Bo. But looking forward to the tonight. indie world tomorrow. Yeah, hope, yeah, streaming so the indie world tomorrow. Just to, yep. so people can be happy for once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And to answer a link exists a, qu a question. Uh, no, I have not seen the Fallout TV show. Is it good? It is a very good show. Me and my girlfriend watched it all in like two days. It's it's very good. Okay, I will, I will seriously consider it. Very good. Are you a Fallout fan? Right. I think that's part of the reason why I probably haven't even been. I, well, I've yeah. I mean I've played a little bit of three and four. Yeah. But I don't think you really need to be if you like that setting and aesthetic, like yeah. that retro future. It's they do it really well. Yeah. So the reason why I've been curious on what's going on with the chat is because right now it's telling me there's one people watching the stream i was gonna say my friend caleb just sent me a screenshot and it says you have one viewer <laughs> right but for me it says five on my screen we had like 130 like a few minutes ago so that's why i'm like oh maybe it's time to end it before youtube explodes even more <laughs> i don't know i don't know what's going on but anyways i've based off the chat i don't think it's true so that's why i'm confused so, yeah, I think it's just YouTube crashed. But Richard anyways, everyone, if you're watching so. this afterwards, thank you for coming by. Um, make sure to check out Bo. His channel is linked in the description below. And uh, we'll see you soon. We'll be streaming that. We'll be talking about that Indie World. Uh, I don't, are you streaming it tomorrow? I am streaming it, yeah, tomorrow morning. We're both streaming the Indie World. So, you know, make sure to check us out. Um, but uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. See you guys.